It's Hilton Yam of 10.8 Performance. We are back again with another episode of the 10.8 Performance Lab. We are in a new setting and a new format. And if you follow along on my Instagram account in the stories, the little poll to see if you guys were up for a format change where we got a little bit more information and maybe a little bit less production. So just here in my office and uh, we're going to talk about a topic which keeps coming up. It's I guess pretty hot and contentious topic now that the Staccato 2011 is really popular. So you can see I've got the rubber band on here and uh, pinning the grip safety with the rubber band from uh, from my groceries. So let's talk about that. If you are new to the channel here and you're wondering why should I finish watching this video about a dude who's about to tell me about uh, why I shouldn't have a rubber band on my brand new Staccato P. Well, um, that's up to you whether you continue watching or not, but I've been around the guns for a long time. This channel is uh, part of my business, 10A Performance, where I design and manufacture components for 1911s. I've been an OEM supplier to a number of 1911 companies. I've been an OEM supplier to Staccato 2011. I stood up the Staccato slash STI law enforcement armor program. Been around the guns since uh, 1911s, since the early 80s, and I've been around the uh, double stack 1911 since its inception in the early 90s. Um, remember when uh, this platform came out as the Chip McCormick Corporation modular frame kit, and it wasn't even a gun, it was just a frame kit. So been around the guns a little bit, and I see a lot now because of the, the, the growth and popularity of this gun, which I'm super, super pleased to see that the gun has a, a, a new lease on popularity, but there's a lot of misunderstanding, uh, to put it in the most kind words, a lot of misunderstanding about the, the deal with the grip safety. I want to put out some information that folks can kind of reflect on uh, to help their understanding of the situation. I will specifically be referring to the Staccato 2011 because it's it's probably the most popular and most prevalent of these and they're of course the largest manufacturer of this platform and uh, their original company STI uh, was basically the original patent holder for the gun. So I'm going to go with that. So the Staccato 2011 obviously derived uh, back in the early 90s, 1992, uh, from a 1911. So I'll refer interchangeably between the guns because the grip safety works the same way. And I gotta take this thing off here, I can't take this. All right, rubber band is not the way. All right, so let's, let's dispense with the I don't believe in grip safeties part and move on from there. If you don't believe in grip safeties, get a different gun that doesn't have one. But if you've got the Staccato 2011, or 1911 for that matter, single stack, whatever, the blue million of them in the last 111 years, uh, then you need to understand how to deal with the grip safety as far as deactivating it uh, such that when you fire, you get a consistent grip and fire, uh, you are able to affect, well, discharging of the gun with each time you grab the gun and press trigger. All right, so doesn't matter if it's a single stack, double stack, 1911, whatever. All right. So if you've never seen the issue before, well, good for you. You, you know, candidly, you haven't been around the gun enough then uh, to get a good sampling of different users in different environments with different guns. I've been around the guns enough such that um, having issued them, worked on them, used them in a law enforcement tactical team setting, uh, seen guys, whether uh, it's hand size, wearing gloves, whatever, or just the way that that particular gun is set up where you end up having a user who's unable to consistently deactivate the grip safety uh, during the firing sequence such that uh, when they grab the gun, disengage the manual safety and go to fire, uh, the grip safety hasn't been depressed far enough to uh, deactivate and free the trigger. All right, so that's an issue. So you can end up with this kind of situation instead of this. All right, so those are that that's basically the crux of the matter. As far as the actual issue at hand is as far as whether your grip on any given repetition is able to deactivate the grip safety or not. Uh, while technique certainly has a certain measure of relevance to uh, the issue, your technique 
can vary, again, based on hand size, gloves, maybe just get a bad draw. All right, so telling someone who's having an issue with deactivating the grip safety consistently during their draw stroke uh, and firing, uh, telling them to just man up or, or, you know, grip the thing harder, change their technique. None of those things are actually the correct solution either, because if a person uh, is dependent on a very specific grip, maybe they have to change it to a lower grip to activate the grip safety, uh, they will end up defaulting to something else on a given rep. And then so maybe they went from uh, only 60% success of deactivating grip safety to 95%. Well, you still got that 5% of failure. So we want to eliminate that. And again, that's where the rubber band tape thing comes in as one of the proffered solutions. Uh, you know, the rubber band that I just threw somewhere under the floor here earlier, uh, if that were only to shift a little bit or if it were to snap, and I don't care, I know that one's from like a head of broccoli or something, but uh, um, I don't care if you use something nicer and it tears off or shifts or whatever, you have some kind of issue, you are out and about, say you're using this as your carry gun, your duty gun, whatever, uh, and something happens to that rubber band and it comes off and you know at best you're 50% for grabbing the gun and getting it to fire. Now you're hanging around wondering, instead of just doing your work, minding your own business, doing your thing, you're wondering, uh, if I need to do anything with the gun, or even if you're at a class, uh, well, now I'm only at 50%, got a lot of issues with engaging the grip safety, and now I need to go hunt around for some more tape or rubber band on the brake. That's just foolishness. So what does this issue actually look like? Well, if you crack inside the 1911, uh, the grip safety has a little arm on the inside of it that pivots up and out of the way uh, to free the trigger bow to allow it to move. All right, so if that uh, arm is dimensioned or fit such, because it has to be fit uh, by someone at the factory, and how much attention they put on it is uh, gonna be one of those things that will determine how your gun works out for you. Uh, I know the Staccato factory, at the time that I used to contract with them, had a specification where the grip safety was supposed to disengage at about halfway during the grip safety's travel. Halfway is pretty subjective, and getting it tuned uh, exactly a certain way, like a certain percentage or whatever, is kind of time consuming. So there's gonna be some variance on each gun. Let's take a look at this. This is a Springfield Emissary 9mm, and uh, I've got the uh, grip safety actually marked with some uh, silver Sharpie here. Grip safety all the way out, all the way in. Triggers blocked. Trigger still blocked. It's about halfway in. Still blocked. Still blocked. Look how far. It's like 90% in. All, all the way in. So the trigger is not free. So the grip safety is fully depressed. This is less than ideal. It means that every time I grab the gun to fire, I must fully depress the grip safety. Can I shift my grip? Can I have gloves that might compromise my grip? Uh, can't even just get a maybe a bad grip because then there will be a bad draw and then be no bang bang. The correct answer is to sensitize or retime the grip safety. And that's a mechanical fix that a 1911 specialist gunsmith can easily do. Uh, if you are talking about a Staccato 2011, you need to send it back to the factory on a warranty ticket and request that they sensitize or retime the grip safety so it releases earlier in its range of movement. And those are the word, that's the wording that you'd want to use. My personal gun is set up so that basically as long as I have uh, skin on this, basically within the first 25% uh, of this, uh, it is able to fire. I have a very light grip, as you can see, and it will fire, all right? And of course, with a firm grip, it's good to go, but I have a, a pretty light grip, pretty much as long as I got skin on it, and the trigger is going to disengage. And that's something that I set up on mine. And the gun was fine, it was at about 50%, but I uh, set it up a little bit lighter. And it's not something you're likely gonna be able to do yourself 
after watching a YouTube video, because keep in mind the grip safety on this gun is fit and blended to the gun. So if you ruin it, you can't just go on brownells.com and order a new part and just drop it in. It is not a Glock. It is fit, blended, and finished to match your gun. So that's a one-way trip. So if you make a mistake because you thought watching that one video on YouTube was going to be enough, good luck. Next question comes up is, hey, what about pinning the grip safety? Uh, I shoot the gun only for recreation and competition. I don't believe in grip safeties. I don't feel like I need it, uh, but because all, all I do is shoot it for fun, that's fine. Uh, pinning the grip safety is an internal uh, matter. And uh, again, specialist gunsmith who does uh, competition 1911, 2011 type work, easily do that for you. There's a bunch of different techniques for doing that. Uh, they are reversible in case you change your mind. Uh, usually they're reversible uh, in case you change your mind. There's a bunch of different ways around it. Uh, when I shot competition, USPSA and so forth, uh, I definitely had some guns that had either pinned or disabled grip safeties. Uh, and again, those were guns that were strictly for competition use, right? If you are considering the use of this gun for duty or CCW use, uh, where you have any concerns about incurring some form of liability uh, at all, whether it's real, perceived, or, uh, you know, theoretical, uh, I would definitely leave the grip safety uh, functioning. It's, it's a safety device that's on the gun and bypassing it. I don't want to go into a shooting review with a wrong answer already in my pocket. And I want all the right answers. Get someone who is a specialist in the gun to fix it the way that you want, whether it is pinning, disabling, or re-timing, and then you're off to the races. Last consideration, just from a simple standpoint, this retail, I think is like a $2,500 gun, minus the optic and the light and anything else that you might've done to it. And really, are you gonna stick a rubber band or a piece of tape on it? Would you get a new sports car and then hold part of it together with duct tape or rubber bands? Cause you're too lazy to get a mechanic to fix part of it correctly. Brings us to the end of a little public service announcement about the uh, 2011, 1911 grip safety. Uh, if you enjoy the content here on this channel, uh, please support, go to the website. Link is in the description below. You can check out the different products that we have on the web store. I got merch, hats, uh, gun parts for your 2011, for your 1911, sights for your Glock, base pads, all kinds of stuff. Uh, also, if you are really, really into 1911 stuff, armor stuff, um, you can go check out my Patreon link also in the description below uh, where I have a uh, channel, site, whatever they call the Patreon thing. I have a Patreon thing, a uh, ton of content there, and I teach a monthly class. Right now, at the time of this filming, uh, it is, what is it, April of 2022? Right now, at the time of this filming, we are rebuilding a Springfield Garrison 1911 together uh, in monthly sessions. So uh, a lot of, lot of content on there. Also, if you uh, want some more training on the nuts and bolts and inner workings of the guns, I do armor courses online as well. Those are open enrollment that you can sign up for through the web store under the training link. And I think that's all the stuff I got for you this time. Remember to check all the links in the description below. Also for discount codes for a lot of my favorite products, including LAS concealment holsters, my very favorite uh, appendix carry holster uh, for Jocko Fuel, like the Discipline Go, Mango Mayhem, and uh, orange something flavor. <laughs> forgot the name of the flavor anyway and uh and the, the malk i like the chocolate malk protein powder so if you like to work out you're on the path uh go check out that stuff got a discount code there also vertex all the videos that you see of me shooting on the range i'm using vertex pants been using them since uh, they came out in all the different versions and uh if you need random gun stuff, Big Tech's Ordnance got a coupon code there too. They got all kinds of awesome stuff there. Um, I shop there myself. So there you go. Until next time, I'm Hilton of 10.8 Performance. And remember, only performance counts.